Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Disciplinary Core Idea ESS3D. It's on global climate change. When I first looked at this picture right here, I thought I was just looking at normal clouds that were forming off the coast. But as you look closer, you find that there are these little tracks or these little patterns. And those are what are called ship tracks. And so as the ships are moving across the ocean, they're producing exhaust, and that exhaust is causing these um, clouds. And so humans are having huge impacts on our planet. And this is just one example of that. And so remember, what is climate? Climate is simply what the weather is like over a long period of time. That's the only difference between weather and climate. And humans are having an impact on the climate. But they're not the only things. We also have natural phenomena that are changing the climate as well. And so as we get differences in solar radiation, as the Earth tilts slightly on its axis, and as its eccentricity around the sun changes, we're getting different amounts of radiation. And that can cause our natural ice ages to occur. Occur. But we also have human activities that are changing it. So as we burn fossil fuel, we're putting more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And as we do that, we're changing the global temperatures. And so humans are numerous. We have 7 billion people on our planet, which is just an amazing number. And in this, in this map right here, each of these dots represents a city that has over a million people in it. So these are going to be the megacities. And if you look at the number of megacities we have on our planet, human population is incredible and will continue to increase over time, but we're also incredibly intelligent. So we can build these complex models that look at the climate and how the climate changes over time, and we can make predictions about what's going to happen in the future, and we can change our behavior based on that. And so how do we know that the climate is changing? Well, we have written record. We have historical evidence that it's changing. If we look at when the flowers are flowering and when the birds are migrating and when the ice is forming on lakes and, and coming off the lakes and if we look at the ice pack as well we can see how it's changing over time and we can also look how it's changing long term so we can look in the fossil record and we can see um, what the climate was like at different times so that we're looking at stromatolites here or we could look at pollen that's being stored in the sediment or collected in the sediment or we could look at ice cores. Ice cores tell us a lot about what the atmosphere look like. We can even collect gas bubbles from that atmosphere and so we can see how the climate has changed over time. And these are all telling us the same thing, that the climate is changing and humans are having impacts on that. So where do we go from here? How do we figure out what's going to happen in the future? We use what are called climate models. And so a climate model is going to be quantitative in nature. It's going to be numerical. And generally, we use computers to develop these, these climate models because they're incredibly complex. We're using science, physics, fluid motion, and chemistry. We're using evidence that we have today. And then we're using differential equa equations. We're using calculus and computers to predict what's going to happen in the future. And what we're finding is that the future doesn't look that bright. If we're looking at temperatures, we see anomalies coming our way. And so this is a number of different models. So if we're using a number of different climate models, what they're all indicating, and here's some links down here below, they're all indicating that we're going to see an increase in temperature over the next hundred years. Now there's quite a bit of uncertainty in that and that's because they're each a different model. They're each using slightly different mass, slightly different evidence, but they're all predicting that we're going to see an increase in temperatures over time. And just like the weather, you'll notice that with the weather it's hard to, for the weatherman to get it specifically right. And that's because it's incredibly complex. But we can look at the trend and we see a trend that's showing an increase in temperature over the next hundred years. And so humans are clearly impacting the Earth. We're changing the atmosphere and we're changing the temperature. But is the Earth impacting us? For sure. And it will continue to impact us more. So we're seeing an increase in severe weather. We're seeing an increase in severe storms. And we'll, that will only increase as the temperature increases. So how do you teach this in the schools? Well, in the lower elementary grades, they've intentionally left this blank. So you don't even have to bring it up. But as we get into the upper elementary grades, you should start talking about the global mean temperature. And that a global mean temperature on our planet is increasing. And that increase will affect life. It's going to infect all of life. It's already infecting a lot of or affecting a lot of ecosystems. And it will continue to affect those ecosystems. And it will continue to affect humans. Imagine living in an island. As the temperature increases, the sea level will rise. As you move into middle school, we need to talk about human activities. And that human activities, especially the burning of fossil fuels, is increasing the amount of greenhouse gases. And those human activities will eventually 
increase the global mean temperature and that's going to impact humans over time. We should start talking about human knowledge and how the knowledge we have is going to be incredibly important for our future. We need to have knowledge of the climate sciences and our models help us predict that. We need to have knowledge in engineering so we can engineer solutions to some of these problems and we also have to understand humans and human behavior because we're going to need to change some minds. We're going to need to point out to humans that we're having an impact on our planet. And to do that, we really have to understand what's motivating humans. And so as we move into high school, we want to start talking about climate models. These are really complex computer models. They'll get better and better and better as the technology increases. We're using evidence, science, and calculus to figure out what's going to happen in the future. But you need to understand that this is simply a prediction of what will happen in the future. And we need to use these models to inform our decisions in the future. Because if you look here, this is where we are in time. And so all of this out here hasn't occurred, and that means that we can make changes to our current system, and that can impact the future. And I hope that was helpful.